Hi! So in this part of the probability chapter, we're going to discuss Bayes' theorem. And Bayes' theorem is actually a very interesting theorem. It, Bayes' theorem uses other previous known probabilities to calculate probabilities. And the one big way we use Bayes' theorem a lot, and we just don't know that we do, is with false positives or false negatives. So a good way to look at it is right now during the pandemic, you know, when we get tested, if you, if for COVID-19, you know, there was an issue in the beginning that there were a lot of false positives, meaning that they said that you had contracted the virus, but then actually you didn't, right? So it was a false positive. And then some people got false negatives where they said they didn't contract the virus when in fact they did. So these probabilities of getting a false positive or a probability of obtaining a false negative test is really using the probability of someone contracting the virus. So it's using a probability to, to find another probability. And so that's what Bayes' theorem is usually used for. So um, I just have a little example here over on this website with Bayes' theorem, and it talks about Back to the Future movie, and it taught and in the movie they talk about Bayes' theorem. But there was one that was um, interesting to me with cats, because a lot of people I know are allergic to cats, and I always think that's crazy because I love cats so much. <laughs> and so um, here in this example with the cat allergy, it says, Hunter says she's itchy and there is a test for allergy to cats, but this test is not always right, right? So it's always sometimes gives false positives. So for people that really do have the allergy, the test says yes, 80% of the time. So that means that 20% um, of the time it's giving false positives, right? For people that do not have the allergy, the test says yes, that is 10% of the time. So that is false positive. So if we go ahead and um, let's look at a little table here with um, a little cat picture. So this is the table that um, that kind of, uh, you know, has a nice little um, organization like a contingency table, right? So if for people that really do have the allergy, so really you are allergic to cats, that's 80% of the time. 20% 20 20 says that you do not have the allergy, but you actually do. So that's a false negative. And then they calculated a probability of false positives, meaning telling people they actually were um, allergic when they weren't, right? False positive. And that just means 90% of the time the test will say no. So the allergy test for cats seems to be pretty effective at 90%. That's pretty high. So, and then the false positive. So that from these probabilities, notice that we could actually find more probabilities. So um, let's go ahead and do an example. I have one over here for a general um, based their own problem. But I thought uh, allerg allergies to cats is always like very common and we can all relate to that. So going to the example here in our notes, this is the formula for Bayes' theorem. It says the probability of an event A given B has occurred. So notice it's just a product of a bunch of probabilities on the top and on the bottom. It's just a sum of products. So what we need to find here is the probability of A, the probability of um, B given A, and the probability of complement of A. And so um, as long as we can identify these in our problem, then we certainly can just plug and chug. It becomes a really quick evaluation. So a certain disease has an incident rate of 0.5%. There are no false negatives. And if the false positive rate is 3%, Compute the probability that a person who tests positive actually has the disease. So we want to find the probability, and let's go back to the allergy of cats. We want to test that a person, let's say, who is test positive to be allergic to cats actually has the disease. So we want to see this. So a person who actually has, in our case with the cats, an allergy, that we want to find this little box here that actually they do. 
So this means we would have to find the false positive rate, the false negative rate, and how uh, many times uh, the test says no and you actually don't have the disease. So we can make a little table like this to organize and then identify which is which of our probabilities. So let's go ahead and go ahead and, and get started. <laughs> So the first thing we want to do is maybe make the table similar. And we'll have a header. And the column on the right. Okay, so we have um, our header is going to be where, and then I can do this in blue. So the test says, yes, you have the, the disease, right? In our case, the test says you have the allergy to the cats, right? The other one said where the test said no. So this isn't about um, whether you have it or not. You actually have it, right? This is just what the test shows. So this means that test says no. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and draw the barrier there. The next one on these columns here, remember that's when you actually had it. You're, you're like, you have an allergy, you have the disease. So the first one would say you have the disease. And then the other one was you um, do not have the disease, right? And so, um, and now we can make the table. Now remember that when you have, when you actually have a test that says you do not have the disease, when you actually do, that means that is a false negative, right? Because the test said you didn't, which is negative, but you actually had it, right? So that means this is gonna be in this corner, a false negative. Okay, recall that when in the allergy to cats, remember that when the test says you, you did have the allergy when you actually didn't. So the, t the test said yes, meaning tested positive, but you actually didn't have the disease. So that would be a false positive. Okay, and then the other two is when you actually, the test is positive and you do have the disease, so it's accurate. And the test says negative and you do actually don't have the disease, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at our um, table, uh, what's given to us and then put it in our table. So the first thing we wanna identify is the false negative. It does say in the beginning that we do have an incident rate of 0.5%. So in, in overall, the percentage that people have this disease, whether or not they've tested for it, they have the disease. So it's like whether or not they are, they tested for being allergic to cats, they have, they are, they have the allergy, right? So not everyone gets tested for it. So the probability that someone has this disease in the world is 0.5%. So that would mean that um, that the probability that the people don't have the disease would be 99.5%. So that's just general population. Whether or not they get tested, they have some sort of um, probability of what of the population has the disease or not. So now we can see that the next sentence says there are no false negatives, right? So if there are no false negatives, that means that it's zero false negatives and this is 0%. So that would mean that if there are zero false negatives, meaning that a person tested negative but actually had the disease, that means 100% of the time the test will say positive and they actually have the disease. So if they have the disease, given they tested positive, that's 100% since there are no false negatives. So this test will never test negative 
if the person has the disease. It will be accurate in the testing. The other part is the false positive. They tell us that there is a 3% false positive rate. So that goes in this one. So this means the false positive means, once again, right, that the test comes out positive and you do not have the disease. Again, you test positive, but you actually didn't, meaning that the test said you were allergic to cats, but you actually weren't, right? Which means that 97% of the time that you, the test will test, say, negative, and you it'll be accurate, right? And you will not have the disease, right? So it should test negative if you don't have it, and that's 97% of the time. So once again, the overall probability that someone has this disease is a half a percent, which means that 99.5% do not have the disease. It seems like it's a rare disease, right? And now we go to testing. Let's go test whether or not a person has the disease. Well, if the test says positive, then you will have the disease 100% of the time. There are no false negatives. 3% of the time, though, it will say it's positive when you didn't have the disease, which means 97% of the time it will be accurate, right? Your test will say negative and you won't have it. Okay, so now we have all the pieces we need. So the probability that a person who tests positive actually has the disease. So let's label the events. So let A, event A, B, so we could use the formula, right? So event A will be equal to um, a person that has the disease, right? And um, the complement then, right, the complement event would be the person, oh, put that in red, does not have the disease. Okay, and then that would mean that event B is equal to a person testing positive, right? So I, the test is positive. So let's go ahead and put it in this formula and put it all together, and then you'll see it's super, once we identify the table, right, and then once we identify the overall probability and the events, it's a plug and chug, it's super quick, you'll see. So the probability that a person has the disease, given the test is positive, is equal to the probability that someone has the disease times the probability that someone tests positive given they do have the disease. All over the probability that someone has the disease times the probability that someone tests positive and has the disease plus the probability a person does not have the disease I'll put it small here and <laughs> see if I can fit it times the probability that someone tests positive given they do not have the disease. Okay, so these pieces we're gonna get from our table here, okay? Those are the, the, po the positive, um, ones and the false positive, false negative, right? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so um, we have some of this information already. The probability that someone has the disease is 0.5%. Let's rewrite that as a decimal as 0 0.005 times the probability someone tests positive given they actually do have the disease. They test positive and they have the disease 100%. 
100% as a decimal is 1. Okay, now I'm down to the denominator. The probability someone has the disease is 5.5%, which is 0 0.005, times a person testing positive, and they have the disease. That was 100%, and that was 1. Plus, the probability someone doesn't have the disease, which is, we said, 99.5%, uh, which is 0.995, times the probability that someone tests positive and does not have the disease. That's the false positive rate. So test, the set says positive and they do not have the disease, that is 3%. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that pink so you know that it's this one. So that's 3%, which is 0 0.03. So let's go ahead and just put this in the calculator. Um, we can just put 0 0.005 times one, which is just 0 0.005, right, divided by, and put a parenthesis because we're gonna do a lot in that denominator. We're gonna have 0 0.005 times one, which is just 0 0.005, plus 0.995 times 0 0.03. Enter. So we get um, here 0 0.1435 if I round to the fourth um, decimal. So this is, um, or we would say 14.35%. Okay, so what does this mean, right? That, um, let's, re let's interpret it. There is about a 14.35% chance a person who tests positive who tests positive, right? Doesn't mean they have the disease, right? It just means the test came out positive. Um, actually has a disease. 